one second. Oh, um, hi everyone. Welcome to the 88th session of the Media Group Exchange Sessions. So this week we have Cheng Yu from the University of Washington here with us to speak about all their work on knowledge distillation um, from large language models. And Cheng Yu is a PhD student at UW working with um, Ranjay Krishna and Alex Ratno. He focuses on data-centric machine learning and specifically developing techniques to efficiently curate large-scale data sets, enrich data set information, and communicate model behavior via data. And he's also interested in the interplay between data and um, all these modern large-scale pre-trained models. So thanks so much, Cheng Yu, for joining us today. And I guess before we get started, do you have any preferences on how you'd like to take questions? Do you prefer them at the end or in between? or? Uh, yeah, I, I think in between we can make the session more, uh, as interactive as possible. And so, yeah, uh, feel free to interrupt me if you have any question in the middle. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, I guess um, let's try to have a good session with um, good audience participation. And without further ado, let me hand it over to Chengyu. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and thank you for having me here. I thank you for the introduction. And uh, I'm Chengyu and very excited to be here to share with you our recent work uh, distilling step-by-step -step outperforming larger language models with less training data and smaller model sizes. And uh, this is a joint work between UW and Google Cloud AI research team. And before start, I wanted to uh, shout out and thank uh, to all my awesome collaborators to make this work possible. So to, to begin with, um, uh, in the past two to three years, we have seen how language models are getting larger and larger. And for uh, specifically, we have seen uh, exponential growth in the model parameters. And for example, in uh, back in 2019, uh, at the time, the largest, largest language model is the Megatron uh, language model, which is only 8.3 billion size. Let's fast forward to 2023, um, right now, the, one of the largest language models we're seeing, they have over 150 billion parameters. Uh, specifically, like GPT-3, it has uh, one, 175 billion parameters. And the PON version 1 model, which is a Google trained model, has 540 billion parameters. So we might be wondering why uh, people are interested in making, building larger and larger language models. And uh, the reason behind this is that uh, one observation in the literature is that we have observed that there are certain emerging capabilities that uh, appear when the language models are, gets larger. And uh, one specifically uh, particularly interested, uh, interesting uh, ability for these large model is the few shot in context learning ability. And specifically the in context learning ability refers to that, for example, uh, in the input prompt, we uh, provide consider it's a sentiment classification test where we have a show some few shot demonstration of input and output pairs. And in this example, we show input is awful and output negative sentiment. And another demonstration is input I love it and output positive. And by seeing only a few demonstration in the input prompt, these large language models can in context learn and generalize for uh, unseen examples. And for example, in this case, we provide input that's great, the model can generalize to output positive. And <clears throat> this, this uh, two shot in context learning ability specifically emerges when the model size gets larger. And for example, uh, in a, another toy example task, um, when we scale the GPT freeze model parameter from 1.3 billion to 175 billion, we see that the few shot uh, capability of the models uh, drastically improved from the small model uh, from the small model to the large model. And uh, why this is uh, exciting is that uh, this uh, emergent few shot capability um, in, can enable a new paradigm of data efficient learning. And specifically, that uh, when we encounter a new task, traditionally we might need a lot of data to train small models. But in this case, with the large language model, we can only just use a few shot demonstration and, and just rely on the model to generalize to unseen examples. So uh, it's pretty, uh, sounds pretty perfect uh, as, as we don't need uh, traditional ways to collect a huge uh, number of data points. But however, uh, 
although these models are large language models are very powerful, they are also very difficult to serve in practice. Uh, for example, uh, the OPT 175 billion model. Uh, this is a open source version of the GPT model. And this model, just to serve it, uh, requires over seven, uh, uh, sorry, uh, 350 uh, GB uh, GPU memory. And this is only for holding the model itself and not even accounting for the extra memory required for predicting and inferencing. And another example is the Palm uh, 540 billion model, and it requires like a TPU version for to to deploy this model and to serve for for prediction, and it requires uh, even estimated of over one, uh, terabytes of uh, memories to require to serve this model. But on the other hand, if we look at the commercial, like a laptop that we're using every day, like a MacBook Pro, the GPU memory comes with our, these typical commercial laptops is only 32 GB. And it's, so it's not even possible to feed or to serve any of these large language models on a commercial and personal devices. But on the other hand, uh, if we consider a smaller language model, so like a T5 model, it's a 220 million model that requires less than one GB GPU memory which can easily fit into all of these commercial GPUs. So because of um, the size of these models, training small task-specific models like the T5 model is still a, a very popular approach. Uh, in, uh, it's still a very popular approach. But um, there's also a trade-off here uh, when we consider training small task-specific models because the standard ways in training these uh, small models require a lot of uh, training data points. And there are two uh, mainstream of training small task specific models. The first is the fine tuning, the pre-trained and fine tuning scheme, uh, which re just refers to the very standard and popular way of taking a pre-trained model, like a bird model, a T5 model, and, and fine tune the model using a lot of uh, human collect, human label data points. But this is, of course, a very expensive way because we need to first curate and collect a huge data sets of a huge data sets of hand annotated data points. And the second approach is the standard distillation approach, which uh, el eliminates the need of uh, human manual uh, annotating the data points. But instead, we cre uh, we create a large amounts of unlabeled data and prompt a large language model teacher to provide to do labels to these data points. And then we use um, the large language, the teacher annotated label to train a smaller models. But both fine tuning and distillation, they both require a huge amount of labeled or unlabeled data points, which can both be very uh, expensive or difficult to acquire in practice. So here we are seeing uh, an inherent trade off between large language models and task specific small models. and Particularly, we see that large language models, although to achieve a pre to achieve a decent task accuracy, we only need a very we only need few shot training data points. But the model size is very large and hard to serve. Now, on the other hand, for training small task specific models, although that we shrink the model size, but we require a lot of, a huge amount of training data points to train these models to achieve comparable performance to large language models. So we see that there is trade-off between the model size and the training data required. And so in this work, we mainly uh, are seeing ways to tackle this trade-off. And to tackle this, we first take a step back and ask the question of why traditional ways of training small model requires a huge, uh, a, a large amount of training data points. So we consider uh, a task, a math word problem where we're given an input uh, like it's a problem like Jesse's room is 11 feet long and 15 feet wide. If she already has 16 square feet of carpet, how much carpet does she need to cover the whole floor? And given the input, we are we want to train a model to output a corresponding equation, 11 times 15 minus 16, that corresponds to the correct answer of this uh, question. So here we see that in order for the model to generate the corresponding equation, the model first need to understand how to, uh, need to first understand that 
uh, calculating area equals to uh, 11 feet long times uh, 15 feet wide, and then uh, minus the uh, original square feet of carpet that uh, Jesse already has. So uh, this input to output relation is pretty complex and it could require uh, many data points for the models, for the small models to learn to associate that area equals to uh, long times widths, length times widths. But on the other hand, inspired by recent uh, Chen Thought paper, uh, their technique in the paper, they observe that if we provide uh, the rationales, for example, in this case, is that just these rooms is 11 feet long and 15 feet wide. Area equals to length times width. So Jesse's room has 11 times 15 square feet. Then she needs uh, 11 times 15 minus 16 more carpet. So if we provide this kind of rationales, which better connects the inputs to the outputs by providing the intermediate reasoning steps, um, they observe that the models, uh, these rationales can help the models uh, to better answer this kind of complex reasoning questions. So inspired by this chain of thought technique, uh, what we propose in uh, this work is a mechanism which we call distilling step-by-step -step that consists of two main stages. So the first main stage is, is that we wanted to extract this type of uh, intermediate reasoning steps or the rationales from a large language model and thus use the, and then use the, these rationales as additional training supervision to train small models and to, to hopefully uh, provide additional useful information for the small models to learn this given task more efficiently with less training data points. So specifically, uh, we propose distilling step by step that tackles this uh, model size and training data, number of training data trade off where we can train a small task specific models that can even outperform large language models performance uh, with a with small model, but compared to traditional approaches in training task specific models, we only require a much less data points compared to uh, the standard approaches. And in particular, uh, there are two main stages of distilling step by step. The first main stage is that given an input, we'll first use it. We first prompt the large language models to provide the rationales that uh, the large language model teacher can use to answer the given input. And by having the rationales, we will use the rationales to train the small model in a multitask fashion uh, to incorporate this rationale into the small model's training procedure, uh, training, uh, training process in, in, in order to uh, guide the small models to learn the task more efficiently. And so oh, here- uh, I had a quick question to yeah, you. Sure. So just a clarification. So here, the large language model is producing the rationale or it's given the rationale? Um, mm -hmm. So here is the large language model is producing the rationales. And we'll talk about uh, the exact approach of how we can uh, prompt the large language model in generating these rationales in, in the next slide. Yeah. OK, thank you. Yeah. Uh, I also so, have a mm -hmm. clarification question. So in yeah. here, uh, do you ask the smaller model to generate the rationale and the answer separately? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, here we will ask the small model to generate them separately uh, through a multitask fashion. And I'll also go a little bit more into detail of how we multitask train, train the small model. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, um, so here, uh, how the first question to like facilitate this uh, the distilling step by step mechanism is how to, to extract rationales from large language models. And here we follow the few shot chain of thought prompting approach uh, in the chain of thought, original chain of thought paper, where, uh, in, where in the uh, input demonstration, the input, input prompt. So consider this is the case of a common, common sense question answering test where we've given the question, Sammy wanted to go to where the people were, where might he go? And there are uh, different choices for, uh, for the model to pick. And in addition to providing the answer, so the answer is populated areas, we'll also provide uh, the rationales in the demonstration. So here we'll first provide the answer must be a place with a lot of people of the above choices. Only populated areas have a lot of people. 
So here in the few shot demonstration, we provide the rational and the and, and the label. So given a new input question, a gentleman is carrying equipment for golf. What is he likely to have? And the answers. The model can also follow the format of first providing the rational. So here the model will just generalize and provide the rational. The answer must be something that is used for goal of the above choices. Only clubs are useful goal. So this is the way that we prompt the large language model to generate the rational, uh, which is the few shot chain of thought approach. And so in this work, we mainly use a few shot chain of thought approach to elicit large language models, uh, to prompt large language model in generating rational. But there's also uh, other potential approaches that we could use. Um, there's also the zero shot train of thought prompting approach, where in instead of uh, human, instead of crafting manually crafting the few shot prompts like the rationals uh, and the label, we can simply prompt the models with sentences like let's think step by step. So in this case, uh, what we're what is found in the zero shot train of thought paper is that. Uh, by providing a question, a juggler can juggle 16 balls, half the balls are golf balls, and half the golf balls are blue. How many blue golf balls are there? They simply find that by asking the models to let things step by step, the model can also generate this kind of intermediate rationals in its output. So this is another potential way that we can use to, to prompt uh, a large language model in generating this kind of intermediate reasoning steps. So after uh, obtaining the rationals extracted from large language model, the next question that we have is, how do we actually incorporate these rationals as extra information in training the small model? So first we consider the standard fine tuning and distillation scheme, where we train the model with a input text question and train the model to output correspondingly a uh, desired label. So this desired label can either be human annotated labels in the standard fine tuning scheme, or the labels can be generated from a large language model teacher uh, as in the standard distillation scheme. So uh, this is a fairly standard loss where we train the model uh, to take us input the input question and output corresponding the, the label. And one straightforward approach to incorporate the rationals to, to inform a small model is that we can directly treat the rationals extracted from large language model as additional input to the small model. So here we can just uh, train the small model to take in both the input, original text input and the rationale and to output uh, the des desired label. So here uh, the small model F takes in both the original question X and the rationals to output, uh, to output the desired label. But uh, for, although this, uh, although this framework does incorporate extra information, the rationales into the small models training training process, but uh, at inference time for the small models to output uh, to predict for unseen instances, we also first need to obtain the rationale for the unseen test examples, which needs to be output from large language model. So it still requires to deploy a large language model at test time. Uh, to generate these rationales. So uh, this framework is not really, uh, it's not really tackling the, or, or reducing the deployment challenge for, for reducing model sizes, because we still need a large language model. So instead, in distilling step-by-step, we propose to treat uh, the rationales extracted from large language model as the supervision rather than the inputs. So here, the actual way of uh, how we train a small model is that given an input, we will either uh, prompt, uh, we will either train the small model to output uh, to output the label as in the original or the standard label prediction task, or we will train the model to output the rational as what we call a rational prediction uh, prediction task. So both given the input, one task is to predict the corresponding label, and another task is to predict the corresponding rationals. And how we facilitate this is through a task, through conditioning uh, the input on task prefixes. So here, uh, there are two tasks. So if we prepend the label token, so here label is uh, literally uh, a word label, 
if we prepend this uh, test prefix to the input questions, we'll train this small model to output uh, the label. But uh, if we prepend the rational tokens to the original input question, we'll train the small model to output the rational uh, extracted from the large language model. So through these test prefixes, uh, we are effectively uh, incorporating rational prediction tests as an auxiliary test, uh, which can help the models uh, to learn the test more efficiently by incorporating extra information. And at test time, if we are only interested uh, for the model to predict the label, we can well, we only need to prepend the label to the original input question and and let the model predict the corresponding label. So we don't have we don't necessarily have to uh, predict the rational at test time if that's not the goal for the end test. Um, so to validate the effectiveness of the ceiling step by step, we conduct our experiments on four NLP data sets. So the first sets of tasks that we uh, experiment on is on natural language inference, and we test on two popular data sets, uh, ESNLI and ANLI. So for NLI, uh, natural language inference, the task is that given the premise and a hypothesis, we wanted to test whether, well, we want the model to output whether the relationship between the premise and hypothesis, whether it's a entailment, is a neutral or contradiction. And for example, in this case, uh, given the premise, the church car is sings to the mass as they sing joyous songs from the book at church. And the hypothesis is the church is filled with song. Uh, the model should output entailment between the premise and the hypothesis. And the second test that we experiment on is on the common sense question answering, a CQA test, where we are given the question uh, involving some common sense to, uh, the model needs to have some common sense in order to answer the question correctly. So for example, the question is, uh, there are 10 apples on apple tree, three fall off, now there are X apples, what is this an example of? And here the answer choice is, uh, the model needs to pick correctly from the answer choice that this is a math problem. And finally, on uh, the, the, the remain, uh, another task that we, experiments on is on the math word problem. So here uh, we're just given a, given a problem description uh, involving some arithmetic and the mo model needs to output a correspond, a uh, correct equation that answer the, the question correctly. Uh, I see there's a question in the chat. So is there any curation of the rational or is that even if it's faulty, the rational still provides useful training signal? Uh, yes, uh, so in in this work, we, we didn't explicitly uh, filter or trying to uh, pick the high quality rationals, but I think that's a great point that if, if it's possible, we can like pick more high quality rationals and that could be more useful in, in training as small models. And I think I'll also uh, touch, uh, I'll also go uh, describe, uh, introduce a little bit more about like some potential like future works. And uh, we also have some ablation experiments on, on this. And I can also, uh, I can also discuss more about that uh, in, in a bit. Yeah, so uh, experiments, so uh, in the experiments, we mainly focus on the settings where we, uh, where we use the large language model, treat the large language, consider the large language model as a 540 billion pound model. And uh, for the students, small test of six models, we focus on T5 models. And we try different models from small models to 220 million model to an ex, uh, extra large model, which is the 11 billion model. And the reason that we consider a T5 model as a student model is because of this text to text uh, format can encompass a huge uh, variety of natural language processing tasks, uh, including classification tasks, natural language inference tasks, and also all the math word problem tasks where we can just treat all the input uh, question as text and also output the corresponding uh, label, which represented as task, uh, text as well. And so we compared 
uh, to two different sets of baseline. The first set of baselines that we compared to small tasks of basic models, the traditional way in training them, which is standard fine tuning or standard distillation. And here we separately will compare it to them when we assume that we have human annotated labels or that we only have unlabeled data points where the labels are generated from a teacher model. And we also compare to large language models baselines. So here we consider two baselines. The first baseline is just few shot chain of thoughts. We're given a new, uh, we're given a new data points. We just few shot um, prompt the large language models in generating the chain of thought reasoning and finally the label. And we also consider pinto tuning, which is a recent work which can be considered as a form of parameter efficient tuning of large language models. And specifically, this corresponds to uh, the earlier mentioned approach of treating large language models uh, output rational as the additional inputs to fine tuning a smaller uh, model. So here we can consider this is uh, an approach where we are adding a tunable set of parameters on top of large language models outputs. So it's a uh, in another view is a way of parameter efficient tuning for large language models. Um, so in, in the first set of experiments, uh, we consider, uh, we mainly compared, uh, we fixed the underlying small test of six models to be the T5 model, a 220 million T5 model. And we vary the training data set size uh, across the X axis and, and compare the performance of distilling step-by-step -step to standard fine tuning and standard distillation. So in on one data set on the ESNLI data set, we see that by incorporating the rationales extracted from the large language models, that distilling step-by-step -step can outperform uh, standard fine tuning by using only 12.5% of the entire data sets. So in this case, we see that in standard fine tuning, if, even if we use 100% of uh, the data sets, we reach an accuracy around uh, 80, uh, below 88.5% uh, accuracy. But by simply using 12.5% of the entire data set, but incorporating the rationales, we see that distilling step-by-step -step can reach um, better performance. So we are achieving a training data reduction in this case of over 85% on this specific data sets. And we conduct experiments uh, over all the different four data sets that we consider. So on the top row is that we co compare distilling step-by-step -step to standard fine tuning. So on the case of ANLI, we also see that there is a training size, a training set size reduction of over 75%. And on CQA, it's over 25%. On swap, it's over 20% uh, training data set uh, size reduction. And we also compare distilling step-by-step -step to standard test distillation. And in this case, all the label, including that the label that we use to train the small models in distilling step-by-step -step are both extracted from a large language model teacher. And in this case, we also see that there is a huge, uh, huge amount of uh, training data set reduction uh, comparing the distilling step-by-step -step to standard test distillation. Right, and- so <laughs> I have a quick question, Chengyu. So in this uh, in this set of experiments, um, do you basically have a different T5 model for each of the data sets or are you using the same T5 model mm -hmm. that's, that's trained on all of these sets? Yeah, so we have different T5 models on each of the data sets. So we consider for every task specific, uh, for every downstream task, we will fine tune or, or distill a task specific T5 model. Interesting. And did you have any reason for like, making uh, a T5 model do only one task? Like what would happen mm. if you actually did a couple of tasks together? Would it actually, do you have any mm. uh, hypothesis on what would? Yeah, happen? yeah. So I think that hypothesis might be the comparison of these kind of test specific T5 models to a general large language model. So our hypothesis here is that to kind of play, uh, to tackle the trade-off between model size and uh, the, Test, uh, test specialist, uh, our kind of hypothesis or belief is that um, it's hard to train a small model that can catch up with the capability of a large language model on a variety of different tasks. But we believe that for specific data, like specific tasks, 
uh, there is a huge chance that we can a much we can train a much much capable small model that specializes on a single task compared to a large language model like a generalist. So it's kind of a trade off between a generalist model or task specific models in in, in this case. So yeah, we we choose to train like different task specific models. But I think it's also interesting to see that whether um, the capability of the like task specific P5 models can work on several different tasks, but still within like a related domain. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if, if that works for multiple tasks with such a smaller model and you're able to train it using your step by step distillation, I think that'll be amazing. So. Yeah. <laughs> right. And yeah, uh, there are some follow up works. Uh, they kind of wanted to achieve this. So in this work, we consider the distillation that we're doing is more task specific distillation. But there are more recent work that also adopted uh, similar ideas for distilling step by step, but they uh, they do it in a more open ended way. And there are some interesting results, and I will talk about that at, at the end of the, at the, the presentation. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. And, um, so can um, you go back to the previous slide. I have two yeah, questions. Sure. So in here, it's mainly the accuracy. Uh, it's not like the measure of the rationale that model generating, right? Uh, can, can you repeat the question again? So you basically have two tasks. One is to predict the label. The other one is predict the rationale. Mm -hmm. And the result right. shown here is just for the accuracies of the label, right? Right, correct. Uh, it's only the accuracy for the label. So okay. here, actually, when we are evaluating the model, we use the label to evaluate. So we are not requiring the model to generate the rationale for, for the task. But it will be interesting to see the, the, if there's a way to like evaluate the rational quality of how the small models are really learning uh, yeah. to correctly reason for, for the task. Okay. We, um, we, yeah, we did some qualitative uh, analysis and it's not in a very like rigorous or a uh, very quantitative measurement, but we see that uh, overall the rational generated from the small models are uh, quite reasonable as well, but, but we don't have a, like actual numbers for, for them. And uh, all the data sets that you study here, um, the original training sets uh, have provided the rationale for each task, uh, for each data points, right? Um, for, yes, uh, I think for, I'm not sure if it, there is explanation for uh, what the rationale for common sense question answering. Uh, there might be, yes, but we, we didn't use any human annotated rationales, but that will be one interesting to compare um yeah like that's the, my right. question like here uh when you compare with the stand uh stand standard task distillation task mm -hmm. basically you this model is only trained on the label but without the rationale right but right. for example the esnli it, i right. assume it has the explanation so probably mm, yes. one ablation study will be that's training a uh, standard model that used the explanation given in um, the data sets and then compare mm. with the uh, rationale generated by the model. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we didn't include this experiments in, in the paper, but early in, in the early stage, we did kind of compare a training model with human annotated rationales and large language models generated rationales. And we find the kind of the, if we evaluate on the final label accuracy, we find it's pretty similar. So meaning that large language models generated rationales are quite as useful as human annotated ones. And that's on uh, ESML data sets. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So on the second set of experiments, we mainly wanted to compare the small tasks of a sick models trained with distilling step-by-step -step, compare these models to large language models baselines. So here we'll fix the training set size to 100%. That is, we'll, for every data set, we utilize all the available data points to train, the, to train distilling step-by-step, -step, but we vary x-axis on different, across different size of T5 model and compare that to uh, the few shot prompted chain of thought baseline and the Pinto tuning large language model baseline. 
uh, represented respectively as the green horizontal line and the orange dot up here. And uh, we see that by using uh, distilling step by step, we can uh, even improve, like train a small models that can outperform these two shot prompted large language models um, by using a much smaller model size. And in this case, um, on ANLI, we can train a model with like 770 million T5 model, which is 700 times smaller than the 540 billion POM model. Um, to, to, we can outperform a, like a 700 times bigger POM model by using a distilling step by step. And this is uh, not only on standard fine tuning and not only on the NLI data sets, it's also a uh, hold across uh, the four data sets that we tried on and also holds for standard test distillation. And there's only one exception, which is the on the swamp data sets. If we only consider a distillation where we uh, train only with large language models produce label, we see that there is still a gap from uh, the distilling step-by-step -step performance, which is the this blue dot performance to the few shot prompted large language models performance. Uh, there's still a gap. So we take a closer look on this specific um, data sets on why there's still this performance, uh, performance gap. And uh, the reason for this is that we find that on the SWAM data set is has a very small training set which consists of only 800 examples. So what we did is that we augment the data set with additional examples from ASD data sets. So with another data set really, uh, very similar to SWAM data sets is also a matchwork problem data set. And we take the unlabeled data from ASD and prompt the large language model teacher, the POM model in generated both the rationals and the labels. And utilizing these additional examples to train uh, distilling step-by-step. -step. So after augmenting uh, the SWAM data sets, we see that there's a huge performance jump from distilling step -by -step, uh, on distilling step-by-step, -step, uh, catching up, uh, achieving comparable performance to the two-shot prompted large language model baseline. But if we look at a standard distillation, even if we use additional data points, there's still a performance gap uh, to the two-shot prompted baseline. So here um, we're seeing that uh, distilling step by step is a way by incorporating the large language models rationale, we can more efficiently uh, make use of unlabeled data to train a more capable uh, test of a civic model. Uh, so and I want to mm -hmm. ask one more question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so when you use the LLM to generate the rationale, you also generate the labels, right? Right, right. But when you train a small model, you are actually using the ground truth label instead of the label generated by the model, right? So there are two settings. So when we compare to standard fine tuning, we're using human annotated gold labels. But when we compare to a standard distillation, we are using the label generated from the, the teacher model. I see. Okay. But in mm. both cases, uh, except for the uh, swamp data sets, uh, the small model can uh, perform better than the uh, large language the, model. The large language model. Yes, that's um, uh, one. Mm -hmm. So I kind of surprised in the sense mm -hmm. that uh, these students' model are actually mimicking the performance mm -hmm. of the yeah. large language model. So why do you think uh, it can outperform the teacher model? Yeah, that's a great point. So uh, if we consider uh, the case for only on the distillation case where the student model is also mimicking and training from labels generated from a teacher model. But in this yes. case, for the large language model baseline, they these large language models are not given the chance to further fine tune on these uh, specific test data, uh, specific data sets. So it's only few shot prompted. But um, if they're so but for the smaller models, although the labels are generated from the large language model and the labels can be noisy, but because of self, some self-training, the small models can, uh, during the training, maybe the, the training process, the self-training process, uh, some noise can be, uh, can be balanced off or eliminated because of this training procedure. Because uh, this is one uh, observation in kind of weak supervision if we use some noisy data, noisy labels to train a student models, 
um, during the training, uh, there could be the, the small models could learn to eliminate some of these noise and can even achieve better performance than, than the teacher. So this one kind of one empirical observation that's been seen in, in the literature from kind of weak supervision or noisy label training uh, works. I see. That's actually a kind of interesting insight. Basically, uh, mm. the LLM uh, itself um, kind of uh, performed decent enough that doesn't have too much of the noisy data, but it indeed in, uh, it has some noisy data. And the mm. small model can kind of, by this weak supervised learning, it can mm. avoid the noise avoid. generated by the LLM. But I think this mm. assumption only correct when the when there is just a small amount of small. noisy data. Right, 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 right. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, so if the noise from the teacher model is just too large, maybe the student can cannot really eliminate the, the noise. But if there is only a small amount of noise, uh, maybe just doing training. So we can consider like a very standard regression task where we observe some noisy examples. But if we train the model, the model can actually uh, recover the underlying ground truths of, of the regression line. So we're kind of thinking in, in, in the same line for, for this. Thank you. So, yep. So, um, so on on the last set of experiments, we uh, asked the question of whether we can use large language models performance as a reference coin, and we asked the question that's what's the smallest student model and the least amount of data that we can use to train a small model required to outperform large language models performance. And in this case, on the ANLI task, we see that uh, this horizontal line is the future prompted large language models performance. And on this test, we can train a 700 times smaller model, uh, a T5 model, using only 80% of the whole available data points. And we can achieve better performance than the future prompted large language model, which is a 540 billion pound model. But in this case, if we uh, look at the performance of standard fine tuning using the same 770 million T5 model. Uh, by standard fine tuning, use even if we use a full 100% of training sets, we there's still a performance gap from this standard fine tuning to the future prompted uh, large language model. So this is also kind of indicating that if we only consider standard fine tuning, we either need a larger model or even more data to catch up with a large language model's performance. But in this case, distilling step by step is a more data efficient and, uh, and a more efficient way to leverage existing data points or, or, or training a more capable a small model. And this is also the case uh, on other data, data sets and also on uh, standard test distillation. So finally on some ablations. Uh, so previous results that we show are all extracting rationales from the 540 billion pound model. So it would be interesting to ask uh, whether distilling status also works for a smaller large language model teacher. So in this case, we consider a GBT Neo X, which is a 20 billion uh, large language model. Uh, so we extract the rationales from the 20 billion language model and compare the performance to standard fine tuning and also the performance to uh, the, the version where we extract the rationales from uh, the 540 billion pound model. So in this case, we see that distilling step by step also works uh, with a smaller language model. In this case, there are still a performance improvement compared to standard fine tuning uh, across the four different data sets. But if we look at the comparison from the 20, uh, two, 20 billion large language model and the 540 billion large language model, we see that the performance improvement uh, over standard fine tuning is larger when we use a more capable, uh, a larger large language model as a teacher model. So this is hinting on that uh, the rational qualities generated from the large language model can be one key factor affecting the effectiveness of the stilling step by step. So we qualitatively look into 
the rationales generated from the 20 billion model and the 540 billion model and do find that in general uh, the rational quality are better uh, from the 540 billion model so jumping back to one question earlier one interesting uh, direction here is to see whether we there are some ways to evaluate and select or filter a low quality rationals and only keeping those high quality rationals in training uh, the small model, which can potentially further improve uh, distilling step by step effectiveness. And another ablation study that we run is to validate uh, whether the multi-task learning design is uh, really important. So uh, recall that previously in incorporating the rational, we treat uh, the rational prediction and the label prediction as separate tests and train a small model in a multi-test fashion. But another straightforward way in incorporating the rational as output supervision is that we can simply uh, train the model to predict the rational and the label as a single sequence, so which we refer to as a single task training task. But here we see that if we simply train the model to predict rational and label as a single task, we find that this is not uh, very effect this is not a very effective way of you know, utilizing the rational. And specifically on some of the data sets on this common sense question answering data sets, we see that there's uh, even performance degradation compared to standard fine tuning. So this is validating the importance of uh, treating different uh, treating the rational prediction Task and the label prediction task, a separate task, and consider a multi task training approach to this. And finally, on uh, just to uh, as a summary, uh, that uh, in distilling step by step is providing a new framework to compare to large language models, we're alleviating the computational costs required to serving them. But we compare to standard uh, approaches in training small task of six models, we are mitigating the data collection costs um, uh, in, in creating the data sets required to uh, fine tune or distill uh, a student model, uh, small test of six models. And some future directions that could be interesting is that um, we, in this work, we focus more on test specific distillation that we train different student models uh, for different tasks. So whether the rationales a similar approach, can we use similar approach uh, to use large language models rationals to help train a more general small model in open-ended tasks for that could possibly deal with different uh, downstream tasks. Um, it could be one interesting direction. And actually this ORCA paper, they also uh, prompt a large language model. Uh, in this case, they prompt a GPT-4 model in generating also the explanation trace for different instruction data points and they use the resulting the, the resultant uh, instruction instructions and explanation where in this case we call it rationales in, a, in in this work they use this kind of data points to instruction to a small smaller models and they also find that uh, the rationales in this case can provide richer information for the student models to better follow uh, the instruction so this is one kind of follow -up. Uh, one uh, related work on using kind of rationals for more open-ended task, and uh, just and to how and we also talked about like uh, potential approaches on filtering out and selecting higher quality rationals. So there's uh, one recent work on self consistency for open-ended generation provides a potential approach to evaluate and select like better high, higher quality rationals. So it'd be interesting to see whether we can combine this kind of approach uh, to select um, good rationales generated from the large language model and to further improve uh, the effectiveness for distilling step by step. So yeah, uh, that will be uh, the, my presentation today. Um, thank you all for, for attending. Amazing, thanks so much, Chengyu. And I guess before we open the floor for questions, let's give our speaker a round of virtual applause. Um, yeah, and the floor is open for questions. So just because we have a few more people on the call than uh, usual, maybe we can raise our hands if, if we have a question and then I can call out people. Um,
I guess I can raise my hand first. Um, yeah. So uh, great talk, Chengyu. And I think there's like so many possibilities for going from here. So I think that's very exciting. Um, a couple of quick questions. So the first one is, was the 220 million model the smallest mm -hmm. one you tried? Can we go even smaller? Is there a, a limit on how large a model needs to be for the student itself? And mm -hmm. any intuitions on that? Yeah, I think is yeah. So here we only the smallest model that we test is the 220 million like T5 base model, but it's definitely possible to go even further down. And as in this case, we see that when we compare to few shot a uh, prompted chain of thoughts, there even by using like a 220 million model, we are on this specific data set, we are uh, outperforming the large language model pretty much. So it's definitely possible to go even further down. And I think it depends on different tasks. Um, maybe for some tasks, uh, a very small model is capable of doing pretty decent performance. So in that case, we can use a smaller model. But I think the kind of the message here is that if we fix the same model size, we see that by just by incorporating rationals, we can just get uh, better performance compared to like standard approaches. Awesome, thank you. And I see Ramon has raised his hand. Do you want to go, Ramon? Yeah, hi, uh, great presentation. I just had a simple question. Um, did you ever experiment with, let's say, how long it would tra take to train the model? Like, did you observe that doing the multitask approach the training converges faster than let's say just fine tuning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. So yeah, we, we do observe that by incorporating rationale, the, the training curve uh, is converging faster than standard fine tuning. Although for like a fair comparison to standard fine tuning, we always train the same steps uh, for, for both uh, distilling step by step or, or the baseline. But the convergence, we do observe that by incorporating extra, uh, the, the extra tax for rational prediction, it helps uh, the label prediction to converge faster. Okay, thank you. Amara, do you wanna go next? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, thank you, Chen, it's a very interesting presentation. Uh, just one question, you're using, I think, four different data sets and uh, they have like different types of questions. I understand mm -hmm. some of them are uh, both multiple choice and some uh, math problems. Uh, any uh, observations on like this kind of distilling step by step? Is it more effective for one kind of questions mm -hmm. okay. than any other? Yeah. So some of our intuition or observation here is that we observe that <clears throat> on the task that requires maybe external world knowledge. Uh, for example, in this, uh, the earlier math problems where, where we see that to correctly answer the problem, we need to know the knowledge about how to calculate the area that equals to length times width. And we also see some examples that needs to, needs, requires the model to know uh, that, for example, which what is the capital of uh, which country, this time relationships. And we see that a, a lot of times the rationals contain this type of world knowledge or domain specific knowledge that can help the smaller models to learn the task more efficiently. So on those kind of tasks or the task that requires more reasoning, we find that the effectiveness for distilling step by step is, um, is better. And for easier tasks, maybe, the rationale doesn't provide that much extra information and and maybe the benefits for the only step by step is not as much. Makes sense. Thank you very much. Oh, I see um, Shiba, do you want to go next? Oh, hi, uh, Cheng Yu. It's a nice presentation. So um, I'm really new with the NLPs. So I'm just okay. trying to make so uh, the model is creating a rational on the labels. So I, I could not able to understand how it generates and the very f few slides. So would you like mm -hmm. to go to a little bit explain about it? Yeah. Um, so like here, the, the yes. slides on ICS. So yeah. So by providing some few shot demonstrations. And for example, we will have different, so here we are only showing one specific demonstration on the input question, the rationale and the label. But uh, in the actual experiments, 
for example, for a simple uh, for a test like a common sense question answering, we'll provide maybe five of these demonstrations. And by given the model a new input, so so given an unlabeled input, the model will learn to complete uh, the next. So to complete the sentence and by following the previous format of first generating the rational and the label. So this is a through few shop counting to, okay. to, to, yeah, to extract the rationals from large language models. So uh, the blue ones are the labels, right? Yeah, the blue one here corresponds to the label and the green ones corresponds to, to the rational. Huh. How about the, uh, the next probability flight uh, slide you mentioned something about? Of oh, this one, yeah. So this the, one the is slide. at next oh, slide. The next slide. Yes. Yeah. So here, uh, this is corresponding the to the standard like a text to text training format, where we have an input question and then we train the model to takes uh, takes in the input and output a corresponding label. So in this case, uh, x will just correspond to the input question and y is the output label, and and here. So if we obtain the, the green part that we see in, in the previous slides, the rationals. So here we'll have two tasks, like uh, specific two losses to train the student model. One loss is the label prediction loss calculated uh, by f of x by measuring the loss between f of x and, and the label y. And another, what we call the rational prediction loss is to measure we would train the model to take in the input question and output the rational. And this rational is just the green part that we seen previously. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Okay, I guess there are no more questions. So um, let's thank our speaker again for the wonderful talk. And um, I'll We'll be posting this on our YouTube channel later today. And so if you have further questions or further discussion points, um, let us know. We'd be happy to connect you to Chengyu. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll see you all next week. So thanks so much again, Chengyu. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.